person gives, receives, and interprets love in a different way. When people speak different love languages, displays of affection can get lost in translation. Understanding how children give and receive love is the key to helping them feel respected, cherished, and appreciated. Before we go any further, let's practice our breathing. With both feet on the ground, close your eyes and take two deep breaths. As you exhale, think about all the stress and frustration from this week leaving your mind and body. Next, think about a time when you truly felt loved. Who was with you in that moment? What did they do or say that made you feel so appreciated and cared for? Hold that memory in your mind for one more moment. Perhaps this memory is so meaningful to you because that person was showing love in a way you understood and identified with. Let's discuss these love languages together. There are five love languages. The five love languages were devised by Dr. Gary Chapman to explain how different ways people can give and receive love. The first language is physical touch. This includes physical presence and expressions such as hugs or snuggling. The next is words of affirmation. This language can express love through a spoken or written word like sincere compliments or encouragement. Another love language is quality time. A person gives or receives love in this way by spending time together, giving full and undivided attention. Gifts is another language, and it is just as it sounds. It's gifts and gestures that show thoughtfulness and effort. The last language is acts of service. These are done to ease the responsibilities or burdens of another person. Each person has what Dr. Chapman calls a love tank. This imaginary tank works just as a gas tank in a car, except this tank fuels us to feel loved, cherished, and appreciated by those who are around us. The tricky part is finding out what fills someone else's tank. It is not a one-size-fits-all kind of situation. Now that we know the five love languages, the next step is to learn our primary love language. Think about the ways you feel most loved. Most people find that they may identify with one or two love languages. While you may feel loved in different ways, one probably fills your tank more than others. Let's go back to the memory we just recalled. If you feel comfortable, close your eyes once more and remember that experience. What was happening in that moment? What did that person do that made you feel so seen, cherished, and important? Does it give you clues to identify your love language? Can you remember other moments where someone demonstrated love in that same way and your response was the same. Oftentimes, the way that we receive love is also the way that we give love. If you feel love with quality time, chances are you often invite others to spend time with you. If you receive love through words of affirmation, you are most likely always telling others what you like about them. Now that we know our love language, Let's think about learning our child's primary love language. Children need to feel loved. They need to feel loved in order to feel safe and secure in their homes and in their relationships. Children thrive on unconditional love from those who are closest to them, especially their parents and caregivers. Take a moment to think about your child do you have any ideas as to what their love language could be? 
It may be that your child speaks a different love language than you do. But just as we can learn to speak another language in real life, we can learn to show love in a language that is not our own. And we have this great community of parents at Women's Care Center to help us discover new ways to show love. When we show our child love in their specific language, it can make our time and effort stretch farther. We can avoid spending time and effort on things that don't matter much to them. Speaking their language allows us more time to invest in the things that they will cherish and remember. Before we go, let's review the five love languages once more. Number one, physical touch, affirmation, quality time, gifts, and acts of service. This is your reminder to do your highs, hurts, and hugs with your child. Tonight at bedtime, perhaps after a story, ask your child what was the best part of their day. Then ask what was the hardest or the most difficult part. Finally, give them a big hug and remind them of your love and how that love will never change. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.